So you've started a Zoom meeting and now you want to know how to control different parts of that Zoom meeting. This is the video that's going to show you on the D10 TV how you can manage all those different settings and what the settings do. So the first thing is we want to get into a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to already assume you're in one. So once you are in your meeting, you'll know it's actually started because this white panel will show. Until the meeting is officially started, you won't be able to see this bottom bar. So I've had some other videos that have shown some of the different features within the Zoom meeting, like the, the whiteboard feature, how to end the meeting, how to invite others to the meeting, things like that. This video is going to focus on the settings. So once you're in a meeting, you'll see two things right down here on the bottom right. You're going to see the mic. If I tap on that, you're going to see a little cross go through it. That means my mic is muted and those individuals in the meeting won't be able to hear me. And you tap it again to unmute it. You can also darken your video or mute your video by tapping on the video icon. And then if you hit it again, it'll turn your video back on. Right next to it, you'll see these three dots. If you tap on those, you're going to have all these different buttons and features. A lot of them you don't need to worry about. For example, in another video I showed the start recording already. I'm going to show a couple more things under the Manage Participants part. I've already shown the share content. Um, the stop video and the mute are just a duplicate of those two buttons. So this is just another way if you want to do it. Honestly, that's a little quicker and easier. It's kind of pointless to click on the three dots and then to do that to mute yourself or, or hide your video. So I've already shown the three top ones. Now you're going to see a couple more things down here along the bottom. The first one is security. If you tap on security, this gives you a couple features within the meeting. You can lock the meeting, meaning nobody else can join the meeting, period. You won't see anybody else join the, um, the waiting room or anything. You can enable or disable the waiting room. I would strongly suggest to keep it enabled. If you have a passcode, that'll keep 99% of bad actors out of your meeting, but that will ensure that nobody you don't want in there will get in. Because maybe the kid, one of your students or somebody else might forward the meeting invites info to somebody else. And if they try to join, the waiting room gives you a way to not admit them where they can't get in. But you can disable it if you want. You can enable participants to share their screen or not. So maybe you want students or other individuals to share their screen. You can also disable this and enable it as the meeting goes. So let's say most of the meeting you don't want others to share their screen. You could keep it disabled. But there might come a point where you want your students or other presenters to share their screen. You could come in and quickly and enable that. You can enable or disable the chat room. You can allow people to rename themselves. And you can disable or enable people to unmute themselves because you can actually mute everybody in a Zoom. So you could give them the capability to unmute themselves or have it where you as the meeting host has all that control. So to get out of that, you just hit the red X. So I'm going to get back into the settings. So that's your circuit. So that is your security settings. The other things you're going to see here across the top is you're going to see the little chat icon over here. If you tap on that, that'll open up the chat room. So if you want to see chats that are going on through your Zoom meeting, you can pull that up. You can have it show notifications or not, or if you want to get rid of it, you just tap on the X. And we'll go back into the settings. Then you're going to see this little cog wheel. This kind of gives you some basic features of the board. You can change the pickup range of the microphones. You can change the noise suppression, things like that. I probably wouldn't suggest going in here. I don't really think there's anything you need to do. It's more so if you're having any issues, maybe that's a good spot to go in and check those things out. So I would honestly kind of ignore that cogwheel. That would probably be more for your IT support to come in and try to help troubleshoot if you're having any issues. So we've done security. Now you've got change view. You can change the view that's showing on your TV. So when you're on your laptop, you can change it from like speaker view to thumbnail to gallery and all those different things, depending on how many people you have in. You can also do the same thing here. You don't have multiple cameras, so there's no need to switch cameras. Camera control. If you tap on this, you're going to see a bunch of different things here that allows you to have different controls. I can zoom in. I can hold the plus down. Once you zoom in a little bit, you can then move your camera around. 
or you can zoom back out. And if you just keep holding it down, it'll go right back to default. You can preset some of the camera positions. So you could say, okay, I want camera one to be here. I want camera two to point over here. I found it's a little glitchy. I think if you have the zoom rooms feature, you can save those and it makes it a little more powerful. You can tell it to mirror or unmirror. Just depends on what you want. The auto framing is that last feature. If you turn that on, I'm going to move off camera, but you will still see me on this camera. Now you're going to see the TV just zoom way in on me. And now I'm going to back off of the main camera, but you'll still see me here. And what the camera will do is it should follow me as I move across the room. Take a second. There I am. It will follow me as I move around the room. And no matter where I move, the camera will follow. As you can see, it's a little stuttery and a little slow. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to move back up and it should catch up. And I'm going to also, now I'm going to disable that. And then I'm going to zoom back out so it goes back to its default. So now once I zoomed out, I put it back to its default setting. Up to you if you want to use the auto framing. You know, I just showed you how it works and what it does. Up to you to decide if it's good enough for what you want. It might work well enough. If you're just going to move around a little bit, I'd say turn it on and give it a go. But if you're one that moves around a lot, uh, it might become, as you noticed, it was a little stuttery. So again, I'll definitely leave that as your choice on what you want to do for those features. So that's the camera control. The zooming of the camera control is nice. So if you're sitting at your desk that's a little ways back, you can actually zoom it in and lock in on your desk. So you can do everything from there. And the mic will pick you up from quite a ways away. This whole top of this device is lined with microphones. It's called an array microphone system. So they're pointed in all different directions so it'll pick up as well as possible. So you could actually have a full classroom and interact and the kids could be sitting at their desks and chit-chatting and the mics will pick them up really well. The last section is the manage participants. So I had another video where I showed that you can invite, you can click the invite feature to invite other people into the meeting. You can mute everybody in the meeting instantly or unmute them instantly in the meeting. When you have other people joined in, you'll see the little arrow here. You can pin their video or you can also rename them. So if you have some kids that like to mess around and change their names so that you might not like what you see with their names, or they might do names that are quite inappropriate. That gives you a way to rename them. And again, you can disable the ability for them to rename themselves, but then it doesn't mean they don't set their name to something a little different. So if you want to rename them, you can control those features. Now, along the bottom here, as I said, you've got the invite, the mute all, the unmute all, and the more. If you tap on more, you have a lot of other features. You can lock the meeting. Again, that was also under the security features where that means nobody else can join the meeting. You can mute participants on entry so as people join in, it just mutes them. You can disable participants to unmute themselves. So if you want to be able to control them muting and unmuting themselves, you can do that. If you're teaching a class where you want a lot of interaction, I probably would suggest against that because that's going to put a lot of work on you as the teacher having to come in and keep unmuting and muting people. Now you could maybe have your tablet or your laptop open and in the meeting with also and you might be able to have a little quicker control there. But as far as doing it on the TV, it's a little bit of few, there's too many clicks to do that. It, it would just be a lot of time wasting for you. You can disable participants to rename themselves. Anybody that's not on video, you can have them hidden. They're still in the meeting, but they won't show up in that grid. Um, you can hide self-view, or you can disable the waiting room. So this gives you a lot of other control over the meetings. They kind of duplicated some of the security feature features under that more setting. And of course, we're having some internet issues at the moment. So that's why the meeting keeps rejoining here. But that was the last of the features within the Zoom meetings. 
So you do have a lot of control right from the D10 board, and I hope you'll find this helpful. Um, it'll allow you to do a lot of those different features that you need to do. So again, I've got a bunch of videos that show all these different features and how to use them in these shorter chunk videos, or I have that one monster video that goes through and shows you everything. So I hope all this video series on how to use the D10 TV you will find beneficial. These are wonderful TVs. The more I've dug in on them, the more I've been impressed with them. As always, if you have any questions, please leave some comments below and I can either do some follow-up videos or I'll respond right away to your comments below. Also, hit that like button below and also subscribe to stay up to date with my latest video tutorials. Otherwise, this is Adam on Tech, signing off.